All right. Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, believe it or not, April 20th. So um, on tonight's agenda, we've got a, at least in terms of on the face, we, it's a little light in terms of subjects, but um, our big subject will be a budget discussion. We've got our finance committee folks here with us. Um, we've got our so we'll have our minutes, our uh, COVID-19 update, a budget discussion, and then any other updates. We don't have any other new business items on the agenda for this week. So I thought this would be a good time to discuss budget numbers and other fun things like that. So um, without further ado, um, let's do the minutes from the last meeting, April 12th. Motion. I did. I'll second. All right. All right. All those, all those in favor of the meeting, uh, of the minutes from March 12th? Aye. My hand. Aye. 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 All right. <clears throat> that brings us down to our COVID 19 update. I don't know if Lori was going to join to this week or not. Do you know, Jeff? She's here. Oh, okay. Lori's here. Hey, MJ. I'm sorry. Hi, no, that's okay. Um, things are looking. Apologies, Lori. I was looking below. That's all right. Things are looking pretty good um, this week. Um, prior to today, the last time I had an update of a new case in town was exactly a week ago. I haven't been able to say that in a long time. So that was very nice. good. No new cases in a week. It was really was nice. Good. Yep. Um, so our current case count in Sunderland is, I believe, six. Um, so our two week number will be around 10, which is less than 11, which was the last time. Um, so we're, we're doing really good. Um, I'd like to remind folks, um, you know, who are 16 and older now, they can sign up to get their vaccine. And if you use Twitter, um, there's a um, thing you can call a follow called vaccine time. And it's a bot that goes out and looks at all of the available vaccines and lists where they are. And then you can sign up um, for a vaccine based on what it, you know, one that's closest to you. That's how I actually found my vaccine in Greenfield was through this little bot that I follow on Twitter. Oh, great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's like I said, it's called vaccine time. And you just follow it. And if you enable notifications, it'll notify you every time a group of appointments comes up. It's for the whole state. So, you know, you've got to pick and choose where you want to go to get your vaccine. But it's it's very handy. Very handy. That's good. It's kind of like one-stop shopping instead of hitting all the different sites and everything. Yep. Because, um, you know, it just, just populated just a few minutes ago, but there's 25 vaccines available in Methuen CVS. So, okay. you know, it, it's, it gets that detailed for you. So it's, it's, it's a nice thing. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Can, can we stick a link out on the, um, the website to that on our thing, Jeff? Yep. Or just at least a note about it. Cause that, that would be good. Okay. Oh, thanks Alex. Oh, perfect. Yes. So He's got one there for that. So actually, yep. let's put that one out. Yep. Yeah. Sure. That'll be a little more, you know, so somebody out here is not looking at Braintree if they don't need to, you know, or something like that. Right. That's Although awesome. I must say, when I got my first vaccine, I was the only two people were from Western Mass in that room when I did mine in Greenfield. Yeah. The rest of them were for Boston and Boston all over the place. So, oh wow, yeah. So people do travel. They do. That's true. It's worth it. Definitely. <laughs> That's my update for tonight. Right, well, that's good news this week. So thanks. All right, thanks. We appreciate it. Anything um, on your end, Jeff, on COVID? Nope. All right. It's funny, I have a very strange time delay here because I can hear all of you speak in the separate rooms and then there's a long delay before it hits, <laughs> it hits here, so. <laughs> all 
and I and the video really does seem very um a lot of uh, lag tonight. So. It's very laggy. Yes. Um, yeah. See some bandwidth issues out there. All right. All right, so we're done with our COVID update. Thanks, uh, Laurie, and hopefully we'll have even lower numbers and more vaccine uh, vaccinated people by next week. So I hope so. Your appointments out there, folks. Yep. It's a good thing. Right. Yeah. Good night. It's us. Good night. All right. So that brings us on to our budget discussion tonight. <clears throat> You want to pull up um, um, what would we like to start with the use of cash or our general budget? What do you think, Scott? Probably, probably the general budget's a place to start on the expense side. Yeah, and then kind of work through that. Maybe a 101 from the town administrator about where we sit currently. Yeah. Uh, sure. So right now we're um, what we have in front of us is pretty much the initial requests from the department or assessments, um, depending on where it's coming from, um, with, with limited changes from that. Um, as far as when we get to revenues, it includes uh, estimated figure for new growth. Um, you'll see we have late last week, there were... Um, updated cherry sheet estimates based on the house ways and means budget. Um, so depending on if you're looking at the governor's budget or the house ways and means, uh, it looks like we may be right around a, a balanced budget, um, maybe a little bit of a, a surplus. Um, but when you get to use of cash, um, we do have some unpaid prior year bills. Yeah. Um, there are additional warrant articles that for the time being I'm looking at, uh, I put in the free cash column. Um, so it, it's, and again, there's potential other uses for free cash, such as some of the capital expenses um, that are, or capital requests that have been filed. So Jeff, with that, could you remind us what we left with or entering this process with certified free cash? Uh, about 398,000. 398. Okay. So still on the low side. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. And so on the expense side, as we look at that pieces, you said we're close with the current state cherry sheet, the most recent state cherry sheet assessment to being nearly balanced. It looks like we were going into the week about 118,000 in the rears. And it looks like now we're close to zero, basically 16,000. Uh, yeah, I think, I think coming uh, last week when we, when it was last updated, I don't think that we had had the new growth figures. I'm forgetting exactly what was up on the website. Yeah, right. uh, new growth was like 145. Right. Yep. Um, so based on the governor's budget, it looks like we're about 7,000, almost 8,000 positive using the House Ways and Means. It's about 16,000. Got it. So, so somewhere we're close to zero. Yep. Right, close to zero, and and that uses the the full thirty percent of free cash going to the operating budget. Okay. Okay. Probably better to stick with the more conservative of those two budget estimates. Right. That would make sense. Yeah, just to be safe. So, would it make sense to go down the budget detail at this point? I think so. Probably, and work through it. Right. I think so. I couple of questions come to mind. Like, where's Paige up on this computer? Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> Is 
So do you want to like walk down through each department? Kind of like we I usually do. I had one big global question, if I could, mm. uh, and, and it's not to take away any any of the um, opportunity from any of the members participating tonight, but there are a couple of salary lines that look like they're incorporating a proposed longevity component. Is that incorporated in this budget? Um, I think there is only one that's specifically longevity. Um, the others are based on the personnel committee's recommendations for wage adjustments. So if you're asking about the personnel committee's recommendations included, and David, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was yeah. last year everybody was brought up to at least the midway point. Yeah. Um, and so people with over five years of service were basically got, got the middle of the salary range. And this year, the personnel committee is recommending that those who have more than five years of service um, get brought up additionally. Um, so if you have seven years of service, you would be seven tenths of the way to, to the maximum of the salary range. And so if that, does that answer your question? Uh, if that's the mechanism that was decided on is being presented, my question is what's the end game there? At, at some point, at some point, we have to get away from, I would assume, our competition getting toward the top for retainage, because again, I go back to the turnover issue. We don't have a lot of turnover, not right. that we want it, but we don't have it. Uh, and all of these longevity components, do they play into percentages of colas in years forward? How does that end up working? <clears throat> Well, that's a good, because at some point we were, the goal was to get everybody up there and then eventually like stop and then just monitor at that point. Do you know what I mean? So that you're maintaining kind of where you are. Sure. So I look at a highway superintendent, 8.5%, right? I assume that's one of them. Yep. Yeah. I look at selectman salary, selectman's assistant salary. That's another one, I assume. I believe it was, yeah. I think there are only a handful of folks, right, in that category. Yeah, it's important to important to put light on them. Yep. So you got an admin salary of eleven percent. Is the library director also in that mix? Or is that contractual? I think that's contractual, right? With the um, you have a single salary the, uh, line with board. six point five. Single salary line with six point five percent. Yeah, I, um, that, and I think that that's because um, that included a wage adjustment and a 2% COLA. Okay. Um, but I don't believe, um, I can look, but I, I don't think she was under five years. Do you remember, David? I don't think so. She's been there at least that. Yeah. Okay. And police right. clerk is another one over 3%. So everybody, yep. everybody, uh, the personnel committee recommended that all non uh, contracted non union employees that were in the wage survey or included in the wage survey um, receive a wage adjustment based on one tenth of the difference between the minimum and the maximum plus 2%. Unless they were over five years and then it was to get them up to the maximum plus 2%. 
And if that's the case, then why doesn't the, uh, is the town clerk salary reflected the same way? The town uh, clerk salary is slightly different. The, yeah. The, and that was because um, there was concern, and I believe it was from the personnel committee, um, that it, as an elected position, um, somebody coming in with zero years of experience versus the clerk's 20 plus years, maybe. Um, right. that, so, so she has a separate line um, specifically I see it. because of her, her long-term service, but there is a, uh, a COLA in the base salary. So does a COLA equal 4%? So there no, was, there was, there was a miscommunication ah, in last yeah. year's budget yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was not included in last year's budget. So that, that, that's, there's 2% last year supposed to be plus 2% this year. So would it make sense for us to be in a position with a series of clip notes for a specific theory about what the goal for town employees compensation is to answer the questions so we don't at town meeting have the same problem that I just spent 10 minutes on asking about individual lines that don't match up to a particular uh, COLA or STEP or et cetera. Yeah, I think we definitely should. Okay, thank you. I didn't mean to hog the board, but thank you. No, that's all right, good questions. So there was none, there was no, uh, implementation as a conclusion of the the study we had done there was no like clarification of like this is that should be a, a good standard or was that just a comparison of the towns good question um i'm trying to think well <clears throat> we kind of have the goal to get ourselves up to the to the in general you know what i mean to get us into the middle of the pack essentially as a minimum that's kind of like what we were shooting for and to maintain that. We don't want to be at the bottom and we don't want to be at, at the top overall. You know what I mean? You may have an individual maybe that may go either way or something, but but the goal was to kind of get to that point because we were lagging so far behind compared to other ones, so. Right, but it did, did not actually come with any specific direction of tiering or, or, or which departments to, In to the, make. I mean, it really just was the numbers. Like a like a suggestion in terms of how to structure things yeah. in the in the report. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember if she had. I think <clears throat> I think one of the I think there was a suggestion in there um, about you going with um, like steps and things like that overall. We tried to avoid that and kind of go with grades in that sense, and try to avoid like steps like union steps directly. But good. Were you going to say something, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> basically, the recommendation was you should come up with something to get yourselves in the range. And they said, such as a guarantee of a minimum 2% increase. Um, right. And if not, at least bring them up to the minimum and maybe additional increases for people with um, a decade or two decades of service. But there wasn't a specific recommendation um, to your point, Elliot. Yeah. So we had to kind of work our way through that. <clears throat> so if I, if I could, Mr. Chair, to avoid subjectivity in the future, how do we make this an objective if program, right? This, this seems like it's an endless race to the top. Yeah, I think, I think periodically what we've got to do is, is, you know, let's just pull a number out of a head, you know, every say two years or three years or whatever, then you go out and you mm -hmm. repoll your, you know, your, your peer group and then, you know, adjust as needed um, periodically. That um, can easily become subjective if you have a particular individual who's particularly vocal or yes. a particularly weighted personnel committee in the future? How does it turn into a program and how do we avoid the trap of everybody making a million dollars in five years? 
not that that's a bad thing, but it's not what town government structured as. No, and right. And I think you know, we almost have to like essentially write down the policy in terms of how we're going to approach it. Do you know what I mean? Because otherwise, right, you can you can't have those issues. Again, indicators like turnover are an issue, right? So exactly, is, salary, right. Is, is salary something that's important or is uh, something uh, that is a, a higher percentage of your healthcare benefit important or flexible time important? I mean, those are other things personnel can be looking at that drive retainage, right? We want to retain and train the best people. Right. It doesn't mean that I can't go in the paper and look at Deerfield looking for a highway superintendent. No offense, George, it's an assistant, but can be in the same salary range and go, eh, well, they get better health care and I'm out of here. And we, did, we didn't do the whole picture. Right. Because <clears throat> I think those are some of the things we want to look at next, right? Because it's not always all about salary. Right. Or, or other, right, because all things being equal, somebody could look at a position and say, all right, well, you know, I'm going to take this one because, like you said, the health care is, the, the, you know, the, the money is maybe even a little less or the same, right. but the health care benefits are better. Right. And like the end, vacation, I win that way. All those other things, what's so the total, compensa right. top, total compensation package? Exactly. So annually at my company, we give the total compensation package as part of the W-2. Yep. And it's important to watch people's eyes open up, although they don't do it anymore because they've seen it in the past and go, oh, huh, my W-2 is not all that I'm actually entitled to working for this company. Right. It's all the other things. It can that be pretty jaw dropping when you go from 65,000 to 105,000. People go, oh, I had no idea. Well, you do, but you only look at your W-2. Right. You don't see those other non-direct benefits in that sense they are possible. they are they are compensation benefits yep because i think the goal was to just get through this part but then you're right then i think next we've got to tackle that and then some kind of like policy about how we're going to approach it going forwards because you know you do that and then you can't just kind of like stop and walk away you agreed know, but at some point people tap point. out too yes and it's got to be an ongoing thing so that way you know, assuming none of us are here the next time around, you know, say it's three years later or whatever, we've got to have that guidance in place for whoever's there and should invariably, outlive all of us. Invariably, oh. somebody will look at this and go, huh, why was there a wage in this line of blank and I was laid off and don't have a job? Yeah. So when, okay, when does, I'm all set. When Thank does, you. When, when does evaluations come into it? It's it's okay. nice that we just talk about wages, but when 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 does someone's evaluation come in? Well, that that's one of the things we've been talking about too, is is having that as part of it. Yeah, but but David, it, you, you can't just talk about it. I, I mean, if if you if if you're just, I mean, you, I, I'm sorry, but 11 percent increase in a in a person's salary is a significant increase in salary. And is 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 there is there an evaluation? Is there an value? Uh, and I'm not saying you have to have the best evaluation, but if you go right. from a one to five, it should have a, the person should have at least a three for an evaluation that that they're doing the. And 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 I'm glad that you guys in the personnel committee talk about money all the time, but but you you have to you have to talk about the person's evaluation of the job that they're doing. And, and, and you have to tie, and you have to tie wages to a, to successfully completing tasks that that are, are put in before you not not just by being here someone could right. be here for 30 years and just be an average employee top of top of top of the scale should mean that you're the best of the best not that you've just been here the longest yep that's one of the things that I brought up is that, you know we don't want to just have it so that you know just by your presence you're getting adjusted in that sense well no there's been no action taken on that so I'm, I'm not seeing i'm not seeing i'm not seeing a policy that reflects that i'm the only thing i'm seeing is an increase of 11 point and, and again i'm just using one number if we're on it an increase of 11.1 percent but there's nothing there's nothing tied to that how how is that person being judged how is that how is that position what what's the work 
that's been completed on that. Had the person had that has that employee had goals and have it, have those goals been met for the year? Yeah, yeah. Because, I think those because you're you're we're saying that well, it's not union, but everything you're you're putting in a union step. Right now, you're saying it. Right now, you want to give a, a one tenth, one tenth, one tenth. That those are steps. You mean you can call them whatever you want, but those are steps. And I don't know if that's what we're trying to do. I think we're trying to find a balance between those two worlds and, you know, in that sense. Okay. Right now, right now, the, the scale, the scale is one way. In my opinion. Is that, yeah. I mean, I, I think the goal is to, to get ourselves up to where we're in a reasonable par with our peers. And then we've got to come up with like a, an ongoing pol you know, policy for that. And we, and we have brought up evaluations and everything too as part of it, so. Sure. I would say our if goal, I could, Mr. Goal, Chair. Sorry, go ahead, Tom. Our goal, our goal is to bring everybody to 50%. Are we there? Uh, we should be at, with this last round, we should have everybody up in that, in that range. I think this round brought and us. Some people uh, who are was... watching, this is the. No, that's right. I was going to say for people who are watching and haven't been haven't been watching the, the really dogged work of the personnel committee in the last four years, about five years, wage surveys, peer communities. You know, how do we actually compare to our other communities? That's not just a laudable, but it's it's a hefty effort, and I think that's a good thing but there has to be an end discussion. So that yep. when we talk about bringing up to the 50% mark, it was the means of the salary range of peer communities, correct? Right. Okay, and that's, that's yeah. important also, just as much to put forward to town meetings saying, listen, we were low in certain areas, we were high in certain areas, we've adjusted accordingly. Now I think I, what I'm hearing is there needs to be an end game to that. And that is, right. all right, what's the end game and what's a process forward? I struggle with, you know, steps and longevity and they can watch our neighboring communities and see what that does to their, to their budgets. You know, just because you stayed in your job doesn't mean that you're not necessarily better at it. And I think I'm echoing Tom's point. Yep. And we, and we've had a number of very heated discussions on those topics. <laughs> you got a tough you group, that. David. You got a tough group. <laughs> um, and, and plus too, you, you know, but it shouldn't be a heated, it shouldn't be a heated discussion. It, it's a, it's a, it, it's, it's, you, you know, what you're looking, what you're looking for is, is, is fairness and how a budget and, and, and fairness goes two ways. Fairness goes, there's an expectation for the employee. And there's also an expectation from the employer to the employee. And it, and it goes both ways. Right. And, and, and you want to, you want to make sure that both parties are leaving up, are living up to their, uh, living up to the expectations. And and, right. and it seems right now the only the only party that's being held to, to expectations is is the people that are paying the the bill because they're they're saying well we have to have more you know we're we're going to be paying more money and and I I I, I agree with is Scott and you David that I, you know if you're if you're paying a sometimes people tap out at the top of their at the top of their level that that happened but the other right. thing is that if it just, just because someone's been someplace for for 30 years doesn't necessarily mean they're doing the third you know the top of the standard work right and as you could be just and checking until in you have until you have until you have some form of valuation or there or or the person has goals or the employee has goals it you where it's not it's it, it's right now it's the, the pendulum has swung way over to the, the other side and you and you have to and you have to have those goals. If you don't have those goals, then this then the salary then how how are you how are you even having the salary discussion if you're not looking at both sides? Good points. Yep, those were points that have been brought up in the past. Yep. And well, there'll be looks like, more. Looks like we're making head looks like we're making headway on the salary, but not on the other points. Well, that, now we've got to work so, on the other stuff. So, so I would say, if you if you want to continue to make ground on the on the salary point, then we better have to make grounds on the other one 
on the other side also. Yeah. You can't have you can't have one without the other. And that is true. And I, I actually I think it's easy. I right now, right? We can say there are no increases unless unless you have a successful completion of valuation. That's a policy date. Yep. And and guess what? And, and, and people and, and employees would be saying, I want my evaluation because I want those increases. Right? Right. I'm, that's a very simple, that's a very simple policy. It's, it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take to, it doesn't take a lot to get there. Yeah. And you know, Tom, in, in, in the same, in the same breath, that puts the robustness of the system on the employer as well. And I think Absolutely, that's important Scott. to bear in mind. Right. Absolutely. It's like who's committed to who? We should be committed to everybody. Good points. Sorry to go down that rabbit hole there, Mr. Chair, but they, they no, stand out you. and they're <clears throat> going to stand out at town meeting floor. Yep. It's all a valuable exercise. Yep, yep. All right. So gl globally speaking, as I look at the expense growth, um, Mr. Chair, as well as uh, Jeff, we have uh, 424,000 ahead of wastewater and debt total, right? Let's, let's not mix those two things in because they're, they're kind of a separate ledger. And in the future, I'd like to, in the future, maybe a budget format that allows that to be pulled out would be helpful. But $424,000 in expense growth um, under what's called operating expenses for general government, of which and we have very little control over. We've, we've hemmed and hawed about it, but 238,000 actually is one-time assessment for Frontier, which is our new zero next year. That's our new baseline, unless it's Conway's turn or however the DESEC formula decides to pivot. I think uh, Peter Gagarin said it best, you know, I hope this isn't the penalty for growth, our ability to pay, right? Yeah. Um, as demonstrated by the state, simply goes out of the way. We're benefited, so 238,910 straight from Frontier. That leaves $185,000 total of growth outside of Frontier. Not to say Frontier would be zero, but if Frontier was a more normal year, we would be having a really different discussion about our revenue side and how close we actually are in use of, well, we don't have enough free cash to actually have a use of discussion. We'll have that in a bit, I guess. But right. if you look at $185,000 and you calculate out uh, two pieces probably for insurance, uh, the rest of it really is just marginal expenses. 2,000 here, 1,000 there, 600 there. I know it sounds like I'm being uh, disarming about it, but the remainder is salary. Uh, and that's why I think the important, the sense of urgency in the discussion, at least from my perspective, uh, was important to bring up. This is the third year in a row we've had steps slash colas slash moving toward migration across our peer communities. It's important that we understand that we have to have a, a total program that puts us in a, a way to project wage increases forward at least two, if not three years. That would be helpful in general. But $185,000 of total expense growth minus the 238, that's Frontier, that's not an unreasonable budget. I would also say, in the same context, uh, budget growth. You know, we're going uh, in the $8 million range, $185,000. I applaud the departments and the town administrator for keeping it to where it is. 238 from Frontier, you know, I'll pull the rest of my mustache hair out over that one. That just annoys me to no end. They actually have a budget growth of less than 3%. And yet we're getting clocked because of our ability to pay. That just annoys me. And the state can't describe it. And I think some ways other communities, other, our peer communities in the district go, whew, thank God it's not our turn. It's Sunderland's this year. And they simply vote yes. Right. Just like we would if it was their turn. That's another formula that's got to be looked at and fixed. That's not inside these rooms. No, but it's a valid point because we've all been here. I don't know how many times before. You know. yeah, exactly. It's been your turn. Well, that's yep. not fair in general. 
if you have a 2% increase or a 3% increase in your total operating budget, and yet you have an 11% increase in one community, what does that mean? Ouch. No, yeah, it means you, yeah. You, your neighboring communities in the district duck their heads and walk away and go, thank God it's not us. Yeah, exactly. And I, sh I was, shouldn't, I, I'm sorry, I'm not mistaken, 14% increase. It's not Frontier's issue exclusively. They have growth and I understand that, but they don't have a 14% assessment to the town of Sunderland outside the DESEC. Very valid point. So that $185,000 in growth, if we had to actually make reductions somewhere, right? Not that this is anything more than a thought exercise at this point, $185,000 in growth, where are you gonna get it? You're not gonna get $100,000 in salaries. You're not likely to get it in any particular department, right? You have 15,000 right. in highway, you have 35,000 in total protection, you have 15,000 under that umbrella, which is a fire. You've got 20,000 in police. And I think the total general government is 37,000. There's your numbers. Right, small. Right, right, you're nipping at the edges. And, and like you mentioned, you know, the bulk of it is personnel. And that's really when you go and you extrapolate out and look at like Frontier or the elementary school, you see the same thing there. The bulk of, while those are the bulk of our costs, the bulk of those costs are all human costs. Exactly. From what we've looked at in 60 the past. to 70% straight up. Yep. So I don't have any particular questions with the exception of that longevity component. Um, Assessor's data contract looked like it jumped. Is that because of an uh, updated triennial contract? And I don't have their page open in front of me and I forget, I should simply look at it before I ask the question. Um, I, I think the, uh, the assessors, or the assessors um, jumped because they're doing a full town reval this year. And so it was in the, the reval line that that was the big jump is that what you're asking about yeah i see it under their expense uh assessors you... it's under 2750 assessors data proc reval yeah so yep. we only do with we've historically done thirds not whole town is there a reason we're doing whole town um uh, that that's what what the assessors had yep. decided. Yep. I am not sure why. And it might make sense every now and then, especially after going thirds and being allowed to stretch the time out, it makes sense to reevaluate the entire the property. Whole. Beyond that, I have no questions. Any questions right now from the finance committee yet? Um, as far as the assessors, do we have, uh, do they have uh, any notes and inkling of uh, just what effect the real estate market and the, the change in prices is gonna be having on our assessments and are, are, the, are the town property values gonna be increasing 15%, 20% uh, on average to, to reflect the, the, the current sales prices or, or is, is that something they're not taking into account? They haven't told me, um, so I, I don't have a good okay. answer, but my understanding of how assessing works is yeah, they will take into yeah. account recent sales and comparable sales. Um, I don't know that I would feel comfortable saying that all property values are going to go up 15 to 20, 15 to 20 percent. Um, but I think that yeah, be better I, not. <laughs> yeah, I would. 
I would be confident that they are probably going rather than going down, they will be going up based on right. that. Well, and that's that uh, two faced thing. You know, everybody wants their property values to go up when it comes to time to sell, but when it comes to taxes, they got to be as low as possible. You know, you want it both ways. But yeah, that's it will be interesting because especially the real estate values have skyrocketed lately. So. Well, I, I've read that you can you can just you know state when you have your tax assessment that your property is lower than when you're going to sell. You just declare it as much higher. Yeah, I've heard that works for some. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> Depends on how many towers you own, Elliot. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we want to go down through each item then, or department from here? Outside of the, the two the two nuts that we have, outside of the two areas that we have impact on, uh, which are going to be salaries and expenses outside of assessment, there's not a lot we can yeah. talk about. Yep, that's true. Right, we're well with you're well within, even even the elementary school with its work that it's done, uh, yep. its contribution would keep us under two hundred thousand dollars of total growth. Think about that. That's that's good stuff as opposed yep. to what it has the trappings that have been there. There's cautionary tale in there. And the cautionary tale is that, you know, we still have expense in education growth that could easily outstrip and has historically and may well continue to outstrip our capacity to pay. Right. The, right. the elementary school um, and Peter, if he's on board right now. You know, we have a seventy-eight thousand six hundred and twelve dollar uh, increase, not out of the realm of possibilities to be paid for. Really, frankly, wonderful. But are there are there traps in there for future years? Things that have been paid for or are being paid for programmatically that could move to the operating budget. Remember right. our first pass, there was a lot more moving toward the operating budget that was paid for and other through other means. Uh, this this is clearly you know, within the town's reach to be able to compensate for it. But is this, are there, are there traps from future years? I guess I'll leave it at that. Yeah, if you look between one of the things that pops one, in my two, mind. two, three, four, in four years, it's gone up half a million dollars. Yep. And then I think of those occasional peaks too, where we get like retirements. Now I know we've been moving those off to a different way to account for them, but there's still a cost nonetheless that pops up. So yeah. we have what coming in this year under under warrant articles, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken, Jeff. I believe so. And that was kind of like the move we tried to get to, right? It was rather than obviously putting it in the budget because that doesn't make sense for an ongoing cost. Correct. And, it, and what happens is it shows up in the budget and adds to the zero, which is the next year, and it doesn't come out. Exactly. So that's not the right place. Right, it's not the right place. And I think too, it it calls out a little more attention to it too, when you rather than burying it in the budget. You That's know, fair. Just from a, a cost perspective too. So. So FinCom, any questions about the general expense growth? Yeah. Well, if that's the case, then maybe it's time to talk about the general revenue growth or, you know, lack thereof or predictability yep. thereof. Can I just add one, one more thing, which sort of underscores one of your points, Scott, which is, you know, given the fiscal uncertainty last year, we had asked departments to, to reduce their requests. And yep. I think that, you know, so baked into that, 185,000 is sort of coming back to what what level services would have been um, so that that's also you know uh, to credit the department heads in creating their budgets I, right I no I, I didn't want to let that that piece go and I'm glad you raised up the, the difficulties of the year I, I didn't want to let that piece go saying that uh, removing frontier puts us at under two hundred thousand dollars of total growth and an eight million dollar budget 
that's pretty darn good. Right. Unless you're providing the service and you're scratching for money, then it's not very good. However, we've got a resilient staff who's very uh, creative. And a new accountant will keep him out of jail too. That's important to bear in mind. <laughs> well, let's hope so. And hopefully we'll get a better uh, grip on our numbers earlier than we have been, so. Mm -hmm. So on the revenue side, Jeff, you're confident in these pieces and these pieces that are here under BOS revenues reflect uh, the governor's budget, right? Uh, what is on screen now? Or is uh, it the house? I was on my own screen. It's more rosy. Yeah. So uh, I guess column AY is the governor's budget and AZ is the House Ways and Means budget. Okay. And the really the two differences are in lines 11 and 12. Yep. And then uh, 34 and 35. So best to stick with the AY column. Yeah, yes, at this yeah. point. Fair. Well, I would say I'm that with at... this revenues, the states are seeing and how they're being um, allocated, right? The revenues the states are seeing are down, I think, five and a half percent compared to a year ago of our projections which yeah. were pretty darn good. And frankly, that's amazing. It's better than expected for sure. Based, based on the year that we went through. Um, and if we're at this point looking at, you know, nearly, nearly even, then maybe our focus uh, should be on that uh, use of free cash piece because that is the weakest part, in my own opinion, that's the weakest part uh, a weakest starting point that we have had in a decade. Right. And we don't want to set ourselves up for, you know, I mean, who knows what the next year is going to bring. So if you're not going to generate a quarter of a million dollars of free cash. You know, you're not going to get other than an anomaly. You won't have a program that's sustainable going forward. Right. Pretty straightforward. If you don't move that value forward, leaving the rest inside of the formula that's available, you, you, you'll be looking at this again next year and your expense growth will tick up and tick up and tick up and you'll have to have some kind of anomaly to move free cash once or twice over a long period of time. It will not be a program anymore. We're at the bottom of the program right now. Yep. A valid point that will come back and nail us later on. Right. <laughs> I'm just looking at some numbers on here. <clears throat> Jeff, you have the proposed use of free cash sheet and the warrant articles? Well, I'm sorry, well, it'd be capital and warrant and radios and all those other fun things. Uh, oh, capital, yeah, I can pull that up. So your use of cash sheet right now is, is relevant to the current year, is that correct? Yes. Uh, sorry, okay. when you say One that I'm looking at right here. This is, this is for fiscal year 22. So this is the existing free cash, correct. existing stabilization and then potential uses. Just, so we're starting with free cash, 398, operating budget 119, that's part of formula, 30%. OPEB, formulaic, we pay that yep. liability forward. And then you have under there unpaid, unpaid bills unpaid of bills. 17, Those are bills in the current year, correct? Uh, so 
Some of them are, I think, from 2018, but most are from 2020. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we should probably pay those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, firearms, SES retirement. That's the one you were talking about earlier, David. Uh, and yeah. Elm Tree. What does that yeah. mean for free cash leaving the year? 150. Hmm. So 150 going forward. Well, that would be the bottom of the bottom. Well, if you take it off from free cash, yes. Yeah, understood. We, we also have, we also have other other means of other funds to take it from. Correct. And so, how much how much we have in stabilization? Uh, four forty seven five seventy six. Yeah, because that that's an uncomfortably low number. The free cash number? Yeah, when you look at that 15931. Yeah. So unpaid bills make sense, right? Formula makes sense. Feed the budget, feed OPEB. Pretty, yeah. pretty uh, uh, a programmatic use of free cash by formula. And it pays forward as well as pays a future liability. I think that makes a great deal of sense under unpaid bills that makes sense uh elm tree is this historic preservation is there a cpa opportunity for that no no i, I had to ask tom you know i know <laughs> firearms i understand we talked about this at capital and we kick it out because it doesn't seem if you're going to buy a dozen at blank value it, it meets it meets the formula Maybe this year, it maybe this year it may. Um, SES retirement, it makes a lot of makes a lot of sense to shed light on that and pay for it outside of the operating budget. That's a liability as well. Yep, um, it is. Was the was the elm tree? Is that for the ongoing care? The elm, the, tree is, the elm tree is looking at pruning and the insulation of a uh, a brace. No, it's looking at it's looking at a uh, lightning attack. Uh, okay, lightning. Uh, oh, the lightning, lightning one. Yes. Yep. Okay. And to be clear, that's the elm tree between the library and the town office building. Right. Correct. Got it. So it's sort of a one-time expense in that respect. It'd be one-time, David. Yeah. Well, it begs the question. You're not going to borrow to do that. Um, yeah. No. And I mean, when you look at the age of the asset, it's pretty old, so. Sure. Does it make sense to appropriate $20,000 out of stabilization to do it? It might. Elliot, what do you think? I mean, it... it's awkward because stabilization you want to have for an emergency, you want to have it yeah. to offset the need to borrow. As far as a an expense, I mean, this this kind of it seems like it's a one term one time expense, but it's it is an old asset. So, sure. so hmm, where did my spreadsheet go? If it were to come out of state capital stabilization, it would end up bringing it down still somewhere in the 400s, but that's still pretty yep. low, right? Absolutely right. If we're already fairly low to begin with, it seems a harmful place to put it, but I mean, it's a rock and hard place. 
So Jeff, would we, would it be out of the, would it be out of step to look at this under the tree warden expense as a one time? I'm looking at line 160. It's only 8,000 right now. I mean, it is tree care. I understood and defend yeah. it, defend it by saying, hey, it's a one time project and it's going to go away next year. It'd be pretty easy to figure out. Um, we, eat, I think that would eat up most of, if not all of the tree warden expense, right? No, I'm yeah. suggesting increasing that oh, expense yeah. item. Got it. We do a transfer to that line item. Yeah, and maybe that's worth, worth exploring, saying it's going up by this value because we have one tree we're going to spend a lot of money on this year, and you won't see it next year. Yeah, and fingers crossed, you know, in future years. It also, as you know, sheds light on it. Yep. Looking to be creative, that's all. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> I don't want to see knock on wood. Mine has not gone off yet tonight. <laughs> there must be enough movement in here. And I, I, I guess I think, and, and Tom, correct me if I'm not recalling this correctly, or if it wasn't at the CPA meeting, but I think that there, it is a one-time expense, but as trees grow, the lightning rod needs to be moved so that it's still the tallest thing over the canopy. So it, yeah. which, I mean, we've already purchased the lightning rod, but there are, you know, minimal ongoing expenses, I think. I, I would guess that it's probably pretty close to its average maximum height, right, at this point? I mean, it's probably not gonna be at that often that we'd have to move it, I would think. So that's a fairly mature tree. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how long it's been there, but that's, I mean, what do they top out or like Elms, American Elms top out somewhere in the 80 to 100 or so feet, somewhere in that range, give or take. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's one worth exploring and we don't have to make a decision necessarily tonight, but. Something to think about. Right. Yeah, because like you were saying earlier, there's not a lot of things we can play with in wiggle room out there. So, right. Okay. So, use of cash at town meeting, if we leave with 150, right, as a strategy, if you leave at one with 150, we've covered those immediate expenses. Lean, not necessarily great, but lean, and that that is what it is. Yeah. We've and had worse years. So under the category of CPA funds, we're going in with 911, 200,000 for early education playground, 20,000 for the restrooms, the Riverside Park. It's yeah. basically 70,000 for a library repointing and then Riverside Park field irrigation, leaving us with closing Three, balance of 15. 596. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And that's across all the categories. Yeah. Yeah. Is there under CPA, did we capture interest? I'm sorry, that would be under debt, right? Yes. For 120? It, it, it is under debt. Yep. And do we have an associated in the revenue sheet? CPA fund funding that? Uh, I don't believe we do. Hmm. I don't recall seeing that. So we should follow up with that. And 
The last pieces are wastewater, pretty straightforward. Comcast, pretty straightforward. Right. Wastewater, mm -hmm. 300. Sorry, before, I, I actually, I don't see 120 on the, on the expense side. Do we still have a bond on that? We do. And we should make sure it's somehow yeah. accounted and paid for. And 384 is waste treatment. I don't mean to jump around. Is there, I don't want to leave the bond issue on 120 aside. If, if not waste treatment, this is the budget. And do they have any pieces and capital that they're funding? Well, capital is another animal, sorry. Right. Um... Yeah, there, there, there were a couple small capital requests. Yep. Um, there was a request to do the phase B of the um, pipe survey. Yeah, um, yep. and actually, we may we may not need that. I need to talk to Rich, but I, I talked to Ty and Bond today, and they were thinking about combining the phase A and the phase B with some leftover funds and so from the original project and yep. the capital for um the additional uh line scoping or you know putting the camera down the line mm -hmm. um and they thought that they could cover doing the phase b with those funds so oh nice um huh. and part of that is you know uh, putting a camera down a hole so i don't think it would go against uh what was appropriated. We have to pay for all the popcorn for the engineers who watch that movie. <laughs> oh, you know, maybe we can sell the streaming rights to uh, <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> I bet we would get few clicks, but uh, you never know. Hey, you know. And never know. New category at con this year. Small budget infrastructure category goes to. That's right. Best sore documentary. Exactly. Okay. Well, you know, outside of the the thin line that is free cash leaving, and the fact that we have, you know, relatively little in the way of expense growth on the operating side outside of Frontier. And then we have homework to do about a program for future personnel escalations or future personnel costs and containment, which needs to be part of that pro that discussion. Yep. I don't, nothing jumps out that I haven't looked at. All right. At home on Sunday in the last four weeks, each of the Sunday mornings I've looked at it. Yeah, I mean, there's no surprises in that sense right. at the moment. Knock on. So a couple, right. things to, a couple of things to maybe crow about. We still don't have a lot of electricity bill. Thank you very much. That's true. You know, outside of the public safety complex, which is just a, just a you know, vacuum cleaner for money. <laughs> um, you know, our building's expense growth has been relatively flat, and that's a good thing. And we had to learn a few things to do differently in this past year. And I would hope that we incorporate some of them uh, as that makes sense as a permanent practice. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. It's always something we can learn. That's right. Elliot, what did I miss? I'm sure there's God, there's there has to be something, but I'm not thinking about <laughs> yeah. there's well, always I think, something. <laughs> I think part of it is we're sort of suffering from, I don't want to say shock, but like you know how we were really prepared for this to be horrible. And 
it's not as bad as we thought it well, was. Well, it's, it's so, important I mean, to bear in pleasant. mind the it's important to bear in mind the context of what bad is. Like last year, we sure. went in with the guidance that 20% of state supported programs would likely be reduced. We're effectively just north of even from last year. There's no substantial growth there. Right. That said, in that context, we had extraordinary expenses doing things differently. Right. So yeah, we're coming out leaner. We're coming out tighter, even though it's the same thing. Uh, but we need to be focused going forward because it's easily a train wreck in a future year. Yep, we have to keep remain vigilant in that sense. Yeah, the, especially in that that one line, the free cash line, but. Yeah, that's the biggest uncomfort for me, right? Or discomfort right now is that. I think Peter wanted to say something. Hey, Scott. Hey, Peter. I can't see you right now because know, my Zoom yeah, went sorry. away. <clears throat> um, could I just vote, ask a couple questions? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. The 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 one has to do with um, your formula you use for for the amount of new growth that you're going to build into the budget mm. because it's not the just the actual amount i gather right and and, I, and and my assumption is that for what you're doing for this budget for the 22 budget is your formula gives you amount that is less than what the actual would be yeah 80 percent of a three-year trend period so could do you have a number that says how much we are uh we are using in this budget that is less than what the actual number would be? Uh, we can certainly get that, Peter. I don't have it off the top of my head. Re the reason I ask is that that would indicate uh, to the extent that that number is larger, that is better news right. for following years. Because yeah, that's gonna, a actually fair assessment. And, and it's going to, because it's going to get picked up. Yep. Okay. In you know, we're just taking that new growth, particularly from the apartment complex over a longer time frame. But in fact, for reality, we're going to be collecting taxes on all that come, you know, this next time around. Is that correct? Right. Like the, yeah. And then any increases so, potentially. So to the extent that we're under, we're using a number that is less than what the actual would be. We're basically, you know, it's going to generate that amount of extra free cash. Okay, everything else being equal um, next time around. Yeah, it could certainly have an impact on the free cash next time around. No doubt about that. Yep. And so it would be it would be good to know, you know, what the scale of that number is. Yep. And we'll get with the assessors and the accountant and get that number, what the one year, what the last two years are, right, and what that impact looks like on the three year average. Right. Okay. Um, the next thing, the next question is regarding the 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 free cash that was certified, which, you know, I understand the concern over the, over the, the number. Um, my understanding is that obviously one of the things you get dinged for when you're, when you're getting the free cash certified by the state is any real estate taxes that aren't paid as of June 30th. Mm -hmm. yeah. A number of real estate taxes were paid in July, I assume, or even thereafter, you know, much more so than average because the payment period was extended to July 15th. Good point. That's true. Do we have, do we have a sense of the number that we What's basically that? didn't capture in the most recent free cash certification yep. because yep. of that, okay? And that therefore is sitting as something that will also give a boost to free cash next time around. Great point. I like the way you're going with this. I mean, you're, I'm just saying that these are two things to me, both of which are it might well be reasonably, reasonably substantial, that if you were looking, you know, year over year or, you know, trying to look at what the reality really is here, that they would be both of them giving a good boost to the free cash number that we're working with. Yep. Great point. And again, I think that that's how I'm writing it right down, Peter. So new growth over three years versus what the last two years were. Well, versus... 
you know, the number we're using versus what the actual number is that the accessories would be telling us that we could claim. Yep. Well, I, Peter, actual. I just, just to, sorry, just to answer that, um, the assessors are not going to be able to give us the actual number until they go out and do the inspections. And they said they are not planning to do that until they do the reval over the summer. So we won't, won't the we won't know that before town meeting. Right. This but is the, the number but, that they gave us. But the big number is the number on the apartment new apartment complex. Right. That's the biggest. Just, just that one single number. It would be nice to know how much of it, because at this point, all of the construction should be wrapped in. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Because last year when we last year at this point, we were only taking, you know, some portion of it because construction hadn't yet been completed by the cutoff date. Okay. This time it should be all wrapped in. We're not wrapping it all in. So just on that one item, you know, forget all the other stuff. How much are we how much are we using in this budget spreadsheet? And how much are we basically leaving? Okay, that's going to be out there for a benefit next time around. Well, when you say using Peter, we're working with certified free cash and then new growth as an estimate. I think that's important to bear in mind. Are you talking about raising the estimate on new growth? I'm, I'm talking the assessors. My recollection is the assessors, um, you know, there's a process where they go by and they they right. look at all the construction and the improvements and the additions and so on and the and the and the new building lots created and, and multiply that by the tax rate. And that's your, you know, that's the that's the new stuff you're going to be taxing. Yep. And so it's going to be revenue. Right. And the numbers the assessors gave us was 145,000, correct, Jeff? Right. Which was the, the I think, 80% of the three-year average plus um, an estimate of $5 million from the apartment complexes. Right. So and what I've... Some and of that I've taken into account. Did that in include personal property, too, at all? Or was that just... That not was sure. the number I was given. I assume yep. it was not. <laughs> right. Yep. So to, okay. to, Peter, to Peter's point, closing the gap on what the actual uh, new growth in a given in this given year in this unique environment is is homework that we have to follow up on. Okay. Um, and likewise, it would be again if I was you know in your shoes, Scott, I'd be wanting to know how much did we leave on the table, or we, how much did we get dinged by the state for taxes that weren't collected by June 30th, but were collected by July 15th. Yep. So as a follow-up to that, Peter, if you look at the Schedule A and how it was sent back to us, there were a couple of expenses that showed up on that where we were assessed by the state that are actually questions that have been sent forward to the Department of Revenue, so we can understand those as well. Right. So there may be, there may be other issues too. Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, I just think that's, Part of understanding the longer term picture here. Yep. Yep. Completely agree. Because they basically both represent assets that we aren't recognizing at this time, but that are certainly going to be, that are certainly out there. Right. And it's important to bear in mind, we caught some of the assets of 116 North, whatever it's called, uh, last year because it was partially complete. So we got it in all the phases. The question is, what's the last what's the last phase? And what I hear Jeff saying is the assessors want to go through and wrap it up at the end, which may be too late for this discussion, but give us guidance going forward. Right. Okay. Right. And any clarity right. looking forward we can get is a good thing. Okay. Absolutely okay. right. Okay. Thank you. No, thank yeah. you. Excellent points, Peter. And any. Anything else we want to cover on the budget tonight? I guess at some point in the next couple of meetings, you'll want to vote one. I guess the question becomes, what is the, what is the process for um, getting the last bit of information? Do we actually wait until we see some consensus from the state legislature and the governor on the final? I mean, that would be the most prudent. That would push us right into town meeting. Yeah. I guess the question is, how long can we go, you know, and do that? Well, right What's now, our time frames. You get you get five or six weeks. I mean, we may as well wait till we have as much information as possible, right? That's that's what we did last year, and this year is just as wonky. Yep. May as well roll with the wonk. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, you know, the, the more, you know, it, it kind of goes into that. The more information we can gather the, and make a better decision, the better off we are. In, in that context, you know, there's not a lot here that jumps out as being like homework on the expense side, with the, ex with the exception of the personnel piece that we talked about. Right. And, you know, if, if whatever DESEC kind of pieces we can glean for the formulation of a, ability to pay, my esteemed colleague in Conway was thrilled <laughs> that we got dinged this year. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't call it gloating, but I would say thrilled. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty close, you know. Pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what they say: what comes around goes around. Let's hope. Scott, yeah. if I could, one other question. Yeah, Peter. Again, I just was wondering where you stand on the capital budget and whether we're going to have another capital planning committee meeting because there were some. I thought there were still some loose ends, but maybe not. Uh, there, there are, and uh, we'll look to schedule one. We'll set a schedule for one later. I'll get with Jeff, and we'll send a feeler out okay. before this week is out, so that we can have one in the next couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. So, to be continued then. Well, I mean, we, we went over it. I mean, in the grand scheme of things. Yep. Weak in some areas, strong in others, homework. Seems to be a, an annual. A, I was going to say a typical budget. <laughs> a typical budget. Yep. Some pain and some good stuff. So. All right. Okay. So next uh, we've got updates. I'll start with Tom tonight. He's uh, right to my side there. Updates, uh, the Franklin County FERCOG is the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments continue to uh, do vaccinations. So far they, they've um, put 15, and it's actually a remarkable number, it's 15,000 uh, vaccinations that have been uh, work gone through the FERCOG group, um, and I believe almost 99% of the people are volunteers. So that's 15,000 vaccinations done by, and 77% of those vaccinations went to Franklin County residents. So that's pretty, and that's it's going to continue. It's going to continue uh, this week. It's going to be now going to be at GCC on uh, Thursday and Friday of this week. Um, so yeah, so there, there's good things. Um, Great. For Thanks Cog, to all those volunteers. We had a meeting at, had a meeting at FERCOG uh, the other day and they were basically talking about how you can go from running to deficit. They See, they still haven't gotten paid for their expenses. Um, so we spent a lot of time talking about how to set up uh, an account that money can be brought to and distribute out to the people. So for, for, it, it was a very interesting, very long for a cloud meeting the other day. That, that's about it, Dave. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> um, Scott, any updates? I missed an opportunity to uh, participate in last Thursday's uh, police contract negotiations. I look forward to next next Thursday's. We don't have one this week. All right. And <clears throat> I think we'll be scheduling a personnel committee meeting before too long, so. Nice. Don't look at that. <clears throat> but uh, Jeff. Town administrator updates. Probably not a uh, lot going on in town. We do have a lot going on in town. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just wanted to give an update on the North Main Street reconstruction. Uh, the town has leased some chain link fence um, to protect the grassy area by the button ball tree um, and, and make it 
clear. We unfortunately don't have a tree protection zone signs um, made up and I tried to borrow some and couldn't find any. So we'll, um, we'll look at trying to make some temporary signage to let people know what's going on. Okay. Um, the contractors also uh, went around as was discussed a couple weeks ago and, and fully enclosed some of the more mature trees on, on the road um, to make it clear that, that it was a tree protection zone and um, so that uh, people didn't walk through it and equipment wasn't left there. So yep, excellent. Grateful for that. Uh, I think that that's about it for the updates. For me. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> do we have any um, any other public comments? Yeah. All right. I think that's about uh, that's about it for our agenda for this week. Our next meeting. Is yeah. For we going in to talk about. Oh, uh, yeah, I think there's an executive yeah. session, right? Right. Okay. I hope they're they're meant. I meant to have one. No. Nope. Yep. I okay. See that. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right. Good. All right. So, um, just read that on my phone. We'll be um, going off into executive session pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, A, Paragraph 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. So what we'll do is we'll adjourn from here, go into our executive session, and then we'll come back here only to um, adjourn the meeting. So, um, but do we have any, and we have no other public comments uh, other than that. So we'll be going in just for an update on the police contract negotiations and that's all, just so the public knows. Yep, a little short one. Um, and just as a reminder, our next meeting will be next Monday, April 26th at the usual 6.30 time. So, all right, do we have a um, motion for executive session? You must, Jeff's printer just sprang to life. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, well, so, so moved. All right, all right second. All right, uh, Mr. Bob, will we do a roll call, Mr. Bergeron? Aye. Mr. Feidenkevitz? Aye. Right. And I, all right, so we will be back only to adjourn. So good evening, folks. <laughs>